Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to pick up with part two of transitioning to industry. If you have any thoughts about going to industry, this is maybe the most important video that I could give to you because getting your foot in the door in industry is far and away the hardest part. So with that, let's get started with the first part of the video, which is going to be talking about the networking. And then the second part, we'll touch upon how to actually apply for some of these positions. So the first part is networking. So where do you start with this? My best recommendation is to start with your current PI or other PIs that are in the department or within the campus that you know, or talk to PIs that you know from your previous work in grad school and ask, do you know anyone that you could connect me with that's working in industry? Even if that person's not specifically themselves hiring, that's your best way to get a formal introduction to someone in industry. And trust me, this is really important, okay? When I was doing my postdoc, we had a career panel where we had people that did their postdoc at the same university as me. They, since then, had gone on into industry and they were coming back to give their um, experience. And one of the people there, she said that industry, getting your foot in the door, it all starts with a cup of coffee. Now, in today's crazy climate with COVID, I'm guessing you're not gonna be going out and getting a cup of coffee with somebody. But you know what, a Zoom meeting, a phone call, that's a great way to start. And I actually ended up talking to this person on the phone and you know, she had a lot of good experience. She went on to be very high up at Pfizer and now she works at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. She was tremendous, but she was able to connect me with other people that she knew. In fact, she connected me with five other people that I knew. And some of those people helped connect me with other people that they knew. And next thing I knew, I had sort of built this network of people in industry that I knew between her and some other recommendations I had from PIs and some people that I had met from collaborations while I was doing my postdoc. I had about 30 or 40 people that I knew and I was talking to that were all in industry. Another thing that I did was actually add some people that I knew had moved to industry that I had prior connections with before, whether those were people that I had met at conferences or people that I know used to work closely with some of my PIs. And I just sent out emails to them, you know, hi, my name is Justin, you know, this is how we met before, if you don't remember me, or these are the people that you've worked with that I've also worked with. I'm thinking about moving into industry. Put yourself out there. Another thing that you could do is think about the area of research that you wanna be going into. So one of the areas that I had studied a lot was biology of aging. That was what I did my grad school on. And I did some work in, in my postdoc on that, not the main focus, but I had done, that was the work I did in grad school. Well, there was a PI at Harvard Med that's very big in the biology of aging area. And he also happens to have good connections within the biotechnology field industry for aging related companies. And so I reached out to him and said, you know, hi, I'm Justin. I'm, we haven't met, but this is the people I've worked with and what I've worked on. And I'm interested in maybe pursuing aging research in an industry setting. You know, can you take a look at my CV? Can you, you know, help me out in any way? So I think putting yourself out there is maybe the most important thing that you could do. And on that note, I'll give one other last piece of advice. Sometimes people put out there on their LinkedIn that they're applying for or that they're hiring for a certain position. Okay, I'm hiring a new scientist, you know, come join my team. These kinds of posts happen all the time. And yes, you do need to actually apply, but there's also nothing wrong with taking your CV and cover letter that you're going to use to apply and actually sending it in a direct message on LinkedIn to whoever is posting that job and saying, hey, look, like I'm applying for this job. You know, I'm really interested. If you have time, I'd really love to talk about it. You know, that kind of personal one-on-one -on -one connection can actually make a big difference. So don't be afraid to do that. So what else can you do? My advice is to definitely, if you don't, make sure you have a LinkedIn. A lot of industry happens on LinkedIn. Businesses run that way. It's a little different than academics. So make sure you have a LinkedIn and you have it fully filled with all of your information, your school, what your experience is. You're also going to find most of the job postings there. 
places like Indeed, they don't quite have as good of a amount of jobs, I don't think. So I think LinkedIn is a much better source for jobs. And you're gonna get to be able to, like I said, maybe message people that are posting jobs or maybe even message a talent acquisition or HR rep that's posting the jobs for the company. That's a real good way to, to get involved with that. And the other advantage is when you do get an interview, and we'll talk about this in the next video that we discuss industry, is you're gonna get a list of people you're gonna talk to in that interview, and you could go on LinkedIn and find their pages and get some background information so you could go into the interview prepared to talk to them. Now, the other thing that you're gonna need to do is try to find somebody that has some level of understanding about industry. And again, this goes back to maybe someone that your PI has hooked you up with and say, this is the cover letter that I've been using and maybe changing around and this is the CV that I've been using. Can you give me any pointers? Because CVs look different in industry than in academics. And the cover letter needs to have certain aspects to it. Now, a lot of the applications that you're going to send are going to go through general HR screeners, and they're going to be looking for certain buzzwords. And these are people that aren't scientists. So it's really, really, really critical that you have certain keywords and that it's laid out in a certain way so that they can identify you as a good target for this position. So that's something to keep in mind. So now you've already started to build out your network. Now what you need to be able to do is you need to move over and actually start applying for some of these jobs. Now when you apply, one of the things that you're gonna have to do is again, try reaching out to these people. Try saying, you know, I'm so-and-so and I'm applying for this position. This is why I'm interested in. Something that I want to talk about that I think people don't realize is when you don't have your foot in the door in industry and you're starting to apply, you're going to have to apply for a lot of jobs. You're going to apply and apply and apply and get rejection after rejection. And it's going to, you know, kind of stink a little bit. And I just had someone that I know, um, a former colleague of mine introduced me to her and she's looking for a job in industry and was looking for advice and I talked to her on the phone for about 20 minutes or so and one of the things she was saying was you know I've been applying for about a month and you know I, I haven't heard anything and I've applied for about 20 jobs and I <laughs> I paused for a second and said 20 jobs is nothing you might you know might take a few months and you might need to apply for a couple hundred jobs before you hear something it's a very competitive field out there and there's too many PhDs out there and not enough jobs in industry. So be prepared to have to wait and be prepared to apply for a lot of jobs. Now, what you can expect is to keep applying and you're gonna hear from some of them, okay? And in the next video, we'll dive more into what to do in the actual interview process and actually um, starting the job. But in general, I just kind of want to set the framework for what the next video will be about. And that's kind of the general overview of the interview. So you're likely going to start by talking to somebody in HR. You'll then move to what they call the hiring manager. That's the person that's actually hiring for this position. And then if everything goes well, they'll bring you in for an on-site interview, or in this case, over Zoom, like a panel interview, where you'll interview with multiple people and probably have to give a presentation similar to what you did when you applied for a postdoc. And I just want everyone to understand that if this is something that you really want to do, keep going. Don't be discouraged if you get people, you know, you don't actually hear back from company A that you really wanted to work for, or that you uh, keep getting rejections, you know, don't worry about it. You'll eventually find a position. Everybody does. It just takes time. So with that, I'm going to bring this video to an end. If you liked it, I hope you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe, share it, and I'll catch all of you in the next one. Bye.